Let's talk a little bit more about this very serious allegation with our panel. Joining us, our CNN political director, David Chalian, our senior Washington correspondent, Brianna Keeler, our CNN politics reporter and editor-at-large uh, with The Point uh, on CNN.com, Chris Saliza, and our legal analyst, former federal prosecutor, Laura Coates. Uh, so, Laura, I guess this is a very serious question. Could this be, from a legal perspective, an abuse of presidential power? Not as it's been told yet. We're not quite there. And the reason it's so important is that, you know, Brian's right. We haven't right got to the allegation of actual blackmail. What you have is this discrepancy of whether or not the president himself was involved in some way in knowing about an article in advance and having a hand in either trying to silence it or did he have a hand in actually crafting it with the idea of weaponizing it against the media? It would not be the first time that the president has obviously tried to attack the media. But it would be an odd step, given his track record, that he has essentially tried to punish the media by not trying to, you know, um, create stories in the, in the press, but rather trying to suppress them. So there'd be an inconsistency overall. But right now you've got the accusation. What you would need legally to push it over that hurdle is that you had that intent to actually do that. And what was his specific involvement in the crafting of it as a way to wield it against to silence and suppress free speech? David Chalian, it does take this whole story that developed yesterday morning to a new level. Well, it certainly does that. And right now, though, we are in a he said, he said scenario. We have uh, Joe Scarborough's version of events. Uh, we saw, as Brian pointed out, the president had a different uh, version of events. And so that will certainly uh, play out and, and perhaps we'll learn more of what the truth is there. What is so, I think, believable is that just from what we know about how President Trump operates, he becomes obsessed with these kinds of things. So you could imagine uh, multiple conversations from three senior White House aides uh, to, to Scarborough saying, if you never mind, forget the threat part of it for a moment, just saying, you know, if you get on the phone and apologize to him, it may be a good thing or whatever. Because you could easily imagine Donald Trump saying to his aides, by the way, is Scarborough going to apologize or not? Is Scarborough going to? And you could see why his senior aides would want that to happen so that they can move on to other things. This has happened time and again. So I think it does give us a little more insight into how Donald Trump becomes so obsessed and, and completely focused on things that have absolutely nothing to do with his job. And the tweet uh, from Joe Scarborough, uh, and I'll put it up on the screen right now after the story. He's the one who raised the issue of the National Enquirer in, in his conversation this morning on his show. President responded. Then, then Scarborough tweeted, yet another lie. I have texts from your top aides and phone records. Also, those records show I haven't spoken with you in many months. I, and I... I th that, and that may very be, well be true. I think it's easy to believe that President Trump wanted an apology. I, we certainly know that he could have some sway with the National Enquirer, according to another outlet, not CNN. Uh, Jared Kushner was one of the aides who relayed something to uh, Joe. And we know from the past that Jared Kushner, as owner of the New York Observer, on at least two occasions went to the editor mm -hmm. there and wanted hit job pieces on people who were uh, a nemesis to him. So I, I don't think it's that out of line with the culture that we've seen to some of the president's top aides. I think my bigger concern, though, is the targeting of the media in in sort of a larger way. I mean, this is, and I don't mean to diminish, diminish this at all, because I think this must be incredibly frustrating to Joe and Mika, but uh, there is, uh, it is a, a bit of an opinion show, and I think sometimes I just, the thing that bothers me more is when the president takes aim at what are very clear facts calls them fake news, and really undercuts uh, the believability of the media when it's a very clear fact, not just a he said, he said thing. He, I think he, first of all, that, I agree with Brianna. I think he benefits, unfortunately, frankly, not because I care whether he's up or down, but because I think this is bad, broadly speaking, for, for discourse. I think he benefits from the fact that we are now, I mean, if I laid out the plot line of the last 48 hours, you would be like, well, that would, like, I might watch that soap opera. You know what I mean? Like, that's what it feels like. And I think for a person who's not in Washington, they see that and they think that's exactly what Trump was there to clean up, right? So, the details get lost, though they shouldn't, because I, 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 the, the tweets about Mika Brzezinski are deeply inappropriate, deeply uh, beneath the office of the president, and set a terrible example for sort of what we want in our political dialogue. But I think he, the more this becomes a, 
well, Mika said this, and then Joe responded this, and then Trump said this, and then, you know, you're waiting for, I wonder how Friday's episode is going to end. I think it gets us further afield from what was the root of this, which are tweets about a woman's appearance, a cyberbullying by the President of the United States. And for the average person, I think they just throw their hands up and say, but all these people are the worst. You know, it wouldn't be, I agree with you. And one thing that's disturbing and odd in this case is that normally you've been accusing Donald Trump of, of attacking the press. And he alone and his perhaps minions, if you want to call them, are attacking the press. This would be an example, if true, that you're using the press as a conduit against another press organization in some way, and that to weaponize from within, to make no statement about it. I'm not convinced of a legal issue at this point in time, but I do understand this is certainly an attack on the First Amendment, if in fact true, that you're going to use um, the concept of free speech to suppress having other people having an opinion, you're talking about Brown or other, other things. It's very important that the distinctions be made clear from the legal abuses to the actual Court the public opinion sphere, and we're not there yet. And by the Chris's way, just, point, yeah, go sorry. ahead, sorry, David, to, go ahead. To your point, though, about it benefits him, you mean in his echo chamber? Yes, in his, his echo his supporters, chamber, absolutely. Because what is clear is that there's almost nothing that President Trump has nothing done he do. over the course of his presidency that has actually benefited him in terms of getting his big legislative achievements. I mean, the guy is between 35 and 40 percent approval rating. So the way he's been conducting himself is not benefiting him in terms of his presidency and his agenda. His health care bill is even more unpopular yep. than he is. So it, 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 I get that it benefits him inside his echo chamber with the supporters. I get in the binary choice of, oh, those bloviating people in Washington or on TV uh, versus the president. It may help him in that battle. But he is still bleeding independence in a way that he didn't, you know, that he had them last November. And, and he's done nothing in his presidency to date to start correcting that. And, and Brianna, it's clear also he's put so many Republicans in the House, in the Senate, elsewhere in such an mm -hmm. awkward position. Everyone, every Republican who comes on this show and a lot of other shows, they're asked about it and you can see how uncomfortable they are. That's right, because they want to be focused on moving their agenda forward. And they have this sideshow going on, like Chris explained. Uh, and I think there is a, something to explore when it comes to the Trump administration's relationship with the media. I think it's sort of a bigger conversation than talking just about this drama. And Republicans don't want to talk about that. Uh, it, it gets in the way of exactly what they want to do. And they also are in this position of having to sort of tacitly say it's okay just to kind of go along with it. You know, you hear some criticism, but I think actually in private, you would hear a lot more criticism from them. So they're in this terrible situation of having to put up with, uh, you know, stuff that they think is ridiculous. And remember, Wolf, I mean, this, this is not a one-off, right? He did this repeat, now not this exact thing as related to Mika Brzezinski. He has said in, uh, inappropriate things about women, Car about Carly Fiorina, about Megyn Kelly. Megyn Kelly. Kelly. I mean, there's lots of them. Blood coming this, out of her right, eyes. We, you didn't, know? we didn't think that Donald Trump was something other than what he is now acting like as president. And that's, to Brianna's point, I think that's what gets a lot of Republicans. They think, okay, well, we're, they're with him, essentially. They're locked in with him, whether they distance themselves or not. Basically, they're with him through the 2018 midterms and through the 20... They're with him as long as he's the head of their party. And they can't really say in good conscience, well, we didn't know he was going to be like this. Paul Ryan basically said, I'm not going to work to elect him during the election. People like Barbara Comstock in uh, Northern Virginia said he should drop out of the race in the Access Hollywood. So you knew what you were getting. So this shouldn't be a surprise, and that is a huge problem for Republicans to try to explain. Obviously, we have a lot more on this uh, throughout the day. Guys, thanks very much.